Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video for PowerShell and SSH. So this is actually our second video in the series where we're just taking a look at how we can automate SSH uh, commands or uh, shelling through SSH with PowerShell. So in our first video, we seen how to bring up a SSH session and invoke SSH commands. We did, however, bring up a few problems with just that method. It works great uh, if we don't need to elevate uh, permissions, so we don't need to go into like a root user. And also, we would need to write very, very long commands uh, because it wasn't persistent. So if we changed directories and then in our next command, we actually lost that change directory. We were right back into our home directory. So today we're going to see how we can actually keep that as if we were in a actual shell through SSH. So let's actually go ahead and let's take a look at that now. So we are actually using a module uh, from dark operator POS SSH. Uh, and also I'm gonna be covering some stuff from the first video, but I'm gonna be putting a link to the first video and the module down in the description below. So please be sure to check those out if you haven't already. And let's actually go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is kind of recreate what we did in the last video, uh, just to kind of get an idea of what we're going to be improving. So let's go ahead and let's create our credentials variable. So let's do a creds equals get credential. And we're going to create our session variable here. And we are going to make that equal to a new SSH session. The computer name is going to be 172.30.123.14 and our credential we're going to pass in our creds variable and we are going to accept the key and then what i also like to do every time that i create a new session is i just like to add the closing session at the bottom here so let's just put that in here so we know we can close our session and let's just make sure that it works. So we can do an invoke SSH command on the SSH session of session here. And our command we are gonna execute is gonna be PWD for present working directory. So let's actually just go ahead and let's test these lines out here. So it's gonna ask me for my username. So I'm gonna put in my username and my password here. All right, so here is our present working directory in the output section. So if you ever did need to pull out um, more details, as we're going to see, some, some of them do get uh, quite long. So we actually need to specify the output uh, uh, property. So let's actually see if we can do a invoke SSH command SSH session. And let's do session command and let's do a Kudo ls and let's see if we can actually run this here so if we do a sudo ls as we can see we get nothing back um, as if we haven't even done anything we don't get a password prompt or anything that is because the invoke ssh command is not an interactive shell um, so you can't interact with it it's not persistent um, now let's see if we do a uh, CD. Uh, so let's just do an LS to see what type of folders we have. As we can see, we can have a we have a documents folder here, but we can also see that we have all these little dots. Uh, so what we could actually do is we can store this into a variable. Um, is one option. So we could do results equals this, and then we could do results dot output. And let's run these two commands here. As we can see, we have all of our list of folders and files. So let's go ahead and let's do two more invoke commands. The first one, we are going to do a CD uh, documents and then a PWD. So if we execute these two here, we actually see that the PWD actually brings us right back into our home Richard. But if we add a semicolon PWD after the CD documents, and we just run that line, we can see that we actually do make it into documents. Uh, but then once again, once we execute that other SSH command, we are right back in our home directory. And that is because the way that the invoke SSH command works, it's just an SSH exec 
on this on this session it will always run from the home uh, home location all right so let's actually create our stream here and let's create our persistent uh, shell basically uh, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a variable called stream here and we're going to make this equal to uh, session dot session dot create shell stream and then if you're using visual studio code you're going to see that we get this on the right hand side uh, and this is going to be our parameters that we need to put in so terminal name columns rows width height and buffer size uh, terminal name i usually kind of keep it pretty simple here so i'm going to be putting uh, ps dash ssh for powershell ssh and then zero, zero, zero for the columns, rows, height, and width. And then for the buffer size, I'm going to be putting it at 100. I find like this usually worked well for me. Uh, I don't really find any issues with that. So once we actually have that stream, what we can do is if we do a stream dot read here, let's create that. So as we can see, we don't see anything. Uh, but here we can actually do an invoke ssh uh, stream shell command and our shell stream is going to be stream and then the command is going to be who am i and if we actually run this here we will see that I see myself as Richard, which is perfect. Um, and let's go ahead and let's try out some more commands here. So let's do an LS. Now, as you can see, we are once again, still in our home directory, but let's go ahead and let's do a CD documents here. And let's do an LS and that would tell us where we are exactly. Well, not where we are, but see the contents of where we are. As you can see, now we see test and test.ps1, which is actually the contents of documents. But just to be 100% sure of that's where we are, let's do a PWD. And there we are, we are actually in documents. So here we can actually execute a bunch of different commands on different lines and we actually maintain our position, maintain our shell in this stream variable. Now, I did say that we would actually be able to do a uh, pseudo in here and actually change to, we're gonna see this who am I change from Richard to change to root. Um, so that's gonna be pretty cool. So let's actually go um, and let's get started on that. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to do an invoke SSH stream expect secure action. Now it's a secure action because we're going to be putting in a password. And by default, when you're putting in a password into an SSH stream, um, the password is invisible. You can't see it. Uh, so that is really what it's going to be expecting. And then we're going to be doing a shell stream. We're going to be putting our stream here. Once again, we still need to put a command. So our command here is going to be sudo su and then dash. And the reason why uh, this is the command we're putting. So if I actually just open up a um, putty window here and we're going to go ahead and we are going to go into the same machine. We're going to log in as myself here. And if we do a sudo su dash here, now pay attention to this here, the sudo password for Richard, and then the colon, we're gonna have to remember this. Uh, but in here, we're just gonna put in our password once again. And now we have root. So now if I do who am I, we are now root. This is what we're gonna try to replicate through PowerShell. So we have our command, and then we're gonna have our expect string. So this is the string that we are expecting to get prompted for by this command. Now we already know that string because we've just seen it here. So that's going to be 
square bracket, square bracket, and then sudo in the middle, and then password for, and we need to actually get our username because our script maybe will not be running always for my user, Richard. So we can put Richard in here, uh, but that really wouldn't be uh, super beneficial. So let's actually grab that um, user here. So the way that I like to do it, as I like to just do the invoke SSH command uh, for that, I don't really like to use the stream shell for that one. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just, uh, yeah, we'll leave that up there. Um, let's do a um, user here. Uh, actually, let's do username, and we're going to make that equal to invoke SSH command and the uh, session that we are going to be running that on is going to be session and then the command is going to be who am I so if we actually run this here in our username we're going to see that we do get Richard here but we do need to get this out and we know that the output is actually in form of an array um, so if we do uh, user name dot output, and I believe zero, I believe this should give us just Richard. So it does give us just Richard. So we could do it this way. Um, this would technically be um, good enough. There are multiple ways that you can get this username out of this output. Uh, you can pipe the output. Um, to a out string and then trim it, that would work as well. Um, but we're just gonna use this method. This method works pretty well uh, and it's also quite short. And we can even make sure that we do trim it just to make sure there's no spaces um, before or afterwards because we don't want any spaces. So once we have our SSH username here, we can actually just do expect string, so SSH, uh, username and then colon and because we have the colon here we will actually have to wrap it in a variable so visual studio code does not want to complain and then our secure action this is what we are going to be passing in to to that command here uh, so here we're going to pass in our password because we already have our password here we're going to pass in creds.password and let's see what happens when we actually run this here so here we do get back true so now what does that actually entail so if we do a stream.read we will see that we have a root at richard latitude 3 3 10 now and if we do our invoke ssh stream shell command on our shell stream of stream and we put in the who am i we are now the root user and by default once you get into the root user and we do the present working directory we are actually in the root folder so here now you can go anywhere you really wanted to so as an example let's copy and paste this one again Let's do cd om richard and documents here. And let's just print out the pwd right after. So let's go into that directory, do a pwd, and there we are. So now we are in home richard documents. So that is how you would use POS SSH uh, to create a shell and be able to execute things in sudo. So you can definitely make some scripts and automate a lot of uh, maybe some Linux management, um, switch management, or AP management, again, depending on the, uh, the ability of those devices and if they have SSH capabilities. Um, you can do quite a bit with POS SSH, so make sure to check that module out. Uh, from Dark Operator, like I said, I will be putting a link to the module uh, down below in the description and also a link to the first video in the series 
uh, down in the description as well. If you guys would like to see any other modules for me to cover uh, that you guys maybe want to learn how to use um, or maybe just have some tips on how to use those modules, please let me know down below in the comments. I am always open to uh, knowing what modules you guys need help on or what modules you guys would like to learn about. Um, I like seeing all the cool modules. PowerShell has a bunch of them uh, so we can discover them together. Uh, and also be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.